how freaking low everybody i am back after a very long time i've got a bit of an idea i've been wanting to do this for absolutely ages basically right true crime Ooh, that's the theme today i don't know if you can tell by the candles i'm really really hoping that they do not set my leaves on fire but i've got it all set up so i'm doing my makeup based on the daily event Do you know how there's always like a daily event like kiss your best mate day or like you know dog day anyway today i've googled and it is just happens to be cow appreciation day mm. every single video that i do with the true crime i'm going to google what day it is and try and fit a makeup theme around it now my makeup skills aren't very good but they are decent. So today we're going to be talking about the killing of Rachel Nichol. This is a pretty long one for my first one, but I'm doing it because I did it for my university piece of work. So I kind of already know the base. This case started in the summer of 1992 uh, at the Wind Wimbledon Common in South London. Okay, so a little bit about um, Rachel. Okay, so before we start about the actual case, uh, she was the child of Andrew and Monica and she was born on the 23rd of November 1968. Family and her, when she was younger, lived in Essex in a little town called Great Tottenham, uh, but then later moved to London with her partner and her child. As a child, she was very charitable. She always helped out um, old people homes and children. She was a very, very loving child. She did go to a high school for girls. Uh, I don't know if that impacted her life in any way, but I just thought I'd include that. When she was younger to when she was, um, when she was a little bit older, she was really into acting, she was into dancing, all of that stuff. And when she, did have a child she did want to be a children's tv presenter because she was just so so good in front of the camera everyone would say she's so good in front of the camera however despite this she did end up getting a english and history degree instead of you know an acting degree but i mean i look like a ghost oh dear when she was a little bit older she became a lifeguard which is then when she met her partner to be andrew which who they had their child alex with we'll be talking about a little bit later because he is crucial to this case. A year after actually meeting each other they had a, their child Alex and they moved in together in South London which was close to Wimbledon Common. Uh, she did used to do a little bit of modelling because she was very beautiful. I'll put up pictures hopefully. Um, she was very beautiful and she stopped doing a little bit of her modelling to care for her newly born son Alex. They ended up living there for a while and when Alex was two years old he, um, they went for a walk at the Wim Wimbledon Common with their dog Molly at about 20 past 10 in the morning. It was noted to be a lovely summer's day, you know. The sun was out, they were having a great time. They went for a walk at Wimbledon, Wimbledon, Co Wimbledon Common, excuse me, which is like this, um, it's like a, like a big park where, you know, you'd see kids running about, you'd take your kids, you'd take your dog, there'd be, oh, like, I think there's a park there. Um, but yeah, they were just walking the dog at 20 past 10 in the morning, you know, they would go there all the time because he'd been living there for a while. It's the where they lived was quite close to um, the common. But unfortunately, as they were walking, a man did approach them and he knocked the son straight out of the way, right onto the floor. This two year old child knocked him straight on the floor and began to stab his mother 49 times. So it wasn't just like a hit and like, like a stab and like run. 49 times i think she actually died from one of the earlier ones which was straight like he almost decapitated it it was that deep he didn't kill her child he just he just decided to murder rachel uh, unfortunately the child uh, alex did witness this happening obviously traumatizing to the child but what makes it really upsetting is as the man was running away he just being so small he was collecting all the things that had fallen out of her bag picking them up putting them back in her bag as a way to like you know here's your stuff mum like you've dropped them and he began to place i think it was five pound note or like a note of some sort over her head where she had blood and saying get up mummy please get up and he just kept repeating that and by the time like I don't know how long it was later, but it was a little bit of a time later. He was still there crying to try and wake his mother up. That is so traumatising for that child. And obviously putting all of the 
the things that he's found on the ground around his mother in her in her bag um he's also i know he didn't know it at the time because he's two really destroying all evidence like that could have been related to the perpetrator but yeah again he was using the the banknote as a, a plaster to try and make his mum better that oh it makes me so upset when the body was when rachel's body was discovered it was found that alex was still there trying to wake his mother up because obviously he thought maybe she was sleeping um but he is technically the only witness in this case but when the police were eventually cordoning off the um, wimbledon common over a thousand areas needed to be cordoned off a thousand one thousand this is why this case is absolutely so massive there's so many twists and so it's like a thousand areas one thousand areas and potentially 500 witnesses 500 alex being two years old and the only witness the the media was absolutely horrendous at um dealing with the child when police went to the body um a decision was made to euthanize put to sleep the child to try to minimize trauma send him to a hospital however the media turned up to the hospital where the two-year-old was staying to try and get an interview with the two-year-old and their father eh? a press release was done um with the father saying you know tr please keep the identity of alex unknown because he he is he's a child and he doesn't he's the only witness and the murderer is still out there so you know the only witness to his crime he's in very very serious danger however the sun newspaper posted a full colour picture of Alex in the back of their newspaper. A full picture cover. A full picture of a two-year-old who's the only witness in his mother's murder. Excuse does that not like, do the people not listen? Like, he's in so much danger now. So this case has got so many like police mess up. Okay, another thing that the police did was they employed a man called Paul Britton. It's a big name in this case. He is a criminal profiler who, you know, he makes profiles on criminals. It's in the name. People who kill, they'll have a pattern. There'll be a specific type of, of person. So he looked at the circumstances of Rachel's death. So she was she was stabbed. Um, he said it was, it'd probably be someone who was a loner, a virgin, lived alone, um, and it was probably from, for a sexual gratitude it was like se a sexual crime because he stabbed her 49 times and not just you know stabbed her a few times and ran away no it's 49 so this Paul Britton was basically in charge of the case he's not a police officer he's not an, an authority he was a criminal profiler but he was in charge of the case okay makes sense he's important because their main suspect that they managed to get was this man called Colin Stagg now Colin Stagg is a big 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 name in this case and he was known as the most hated man in Britain for almost 16 years I'm gonna explain why he was a 31 year old man at the time uh, I couldn't really find very much about his childhood his family obviously it's 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 disclosed like the public's not really allowed to know and it just so happened that he fit the um, criminal profile dark hair he was like really sexually explicit a loner virgin you know tall he fit like what a few witnesses had witnessed as well and there's also a a program on crime watch where he matched a facial composite that they did on crime watch so the public were also having eyes on him everyone had the eyes on colin stagg um, but at the time he was actually at wimbledon common at the time of the murder as well doesn't look good he was on a short walk uh, with his dog as well uh, on the common uh, the same day he was unemployed which is also what uh, britain said that he would be unemployed however he didn't go for his usual long walks in the morning um he had a really bad headache at the time so he actually left early to have a nap on his sofa and he claimed he was back at 25 minutes past nine but yeah there was a woman who recognized him from colin from crime watch so she called the police and said this guy is the guy in the composite on crime watch I and mean, she actually recognized him this is big part of it she recognized him from it was called lonely hearts column now the concept bit strange it was like a, a thing in the newspaper 
where you'd put like, it's like Tinder, but like in the old days, like it'd be like, like I'm 20, you know, single, like I'm this height, this weight, da 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 da, and a little picture of me. And they call up and they go on a date. So this is where this woman recognised him from because she was talking to him on, on there. And she told police that he was very, he had a very sexual, had loads of se weird sexual like desires and fetishes. He was into harming people. So, I mean, it's not looking good, Colin. It's not looking good. After the police got this call off of this woman saying that he's, he's the person in the picture on Crime Watch and he's very, very strange behaviour, they raided his house. To their surprise, they found a lot of suspicious things. They found a black sheath knife, a black studded belt, black gloves, and his bedroom was painted black and had a massive big pentagram on the floor. Um, and they also found seven cult books. So it's not really looking good for Colin second minute. You can see why people did think he's Rachel's killer. It was the police to try and get Colin to confess. They set up a project called Project Edzel. Now this was where the police also went very, very wrong. Project Edzel was an absolute mess. It was basically a honey trap which is, you know, you're tricking a man using the police by using a woman. This was done by using a undercover police officer who went by the name, the cover name, Lizzie James. This whole thing was absolutely just not very good from the get-go. And this was done to set up to try and get a confession out of Colin, which is kind of illegal. They went about it in a very, very unethical way but for, for many, many reasons. One of the reasons is that they promised to not ask Colin any leading questions they were saying all of the questions are very leading it started off just her sending him like letters and obviously the police would analyze those letters um but then it started they started meeting up and do you know where the first meetup was the wimbledon common where he supposedly murdered rachel nickel so not only are they trying to get an innocent man to confess they're also bringing in a, a, a woman to the Wimbledon Common, the police had to be so far away that Colin wouldn't recognise them. So they would have had to be far enough away that Lizzie wouldn't be able to be saved if anything bad, if Colin was the killer and there was anything bad about to happen. And so when they met up, I think they went to a little cafe nearby. Um, Lizzie was informed to, you know, try and get this confession out of Colin. But she started going into a lot of detail about what she likes, she likes try and get this confession out of him more she says that you tell me your biggest secret i'll tell you mine so she goes first and she tells him her biggest secret which what she said was sacrificing a pregnant mother and unborn child didn't know that was in the police job description but absolutely sure in hopes that she, he would then say you know my biggest secret is i killed rachel nickel however not that easy because he is an innocent man, so he's not going to. And the worst bit, the worst thing that she did was, she started then talking, obviously he wasn't saying about Rachel, so she brought up Rachel and she was saying, oh, she really wishes that he had killed Rachel because that's what she loves. Like that's her like sexual fantasy, like her sexual fantasy would come alive if Colin was like, oh yeah, I killed Rachel. So she was kind of like, you know, trying to force him to say it. And she even said, I will have sex with you if you killed Rachel. Leading questions, that was a very, very leading question. It's just very, very unethical about how they went about the whole thing. When they finally arrested him, because of this, you know, honey trap, Project Exel, Edsel, they did might actually arrest him and he was being interviewed for three whole days and he was in custody for longer than 24 hours, which under the Policing and Criminal Evidence Act 1984, that there's laws protecting people from that. So he said it was just a, a mess, a mess. And again, Paul Britton, not the police officer, who was in charge of the case, technically, he was giving them advice on how to interview him. Paul Britton, the criminal profiler. Eh? But yeah, again, they arrested him over no, there was absolutely no forensic DNA evidence, any of that, because it wasn't really at the time. It does come in later, which we'll talk about, but at the time he, um, Colin Stagg was arrested, there was none of that. He had no link to the crime whatsoever, other than this honey trap and his house being, you know, 
weird satanic ritual. I think that was just like what he was into. And he just so happened to, you know, like hurting people, but like not in the sense of he would actually go out and do it. As uh, when they went to court, obviously the court was like, the prosecution didn't take um, Project Edsel into evidence. So he was only arrested on basis of what he was saying to Lizzie James which obviously because they went around uh, they went about it in such an unethical way the evidence was just was just dismissed and it wasn't allowed so he was set free even though he was set free don't forget crime watch you've got the newspapers all that all the public all the media absolutely hate him because they 100% believe that he killed Rachel so Colin was a free man but the media still hated him and there was even situations where he would be walking he'd get beaten up in the streets you know like killer 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 murderer murderer he's just an innocent man just trying to live by his day he's already got like a few years like taken off of his life because you know of all this happening you know interviews da, 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 da. this was in 1994 so this was two years later that he actually got you know the, the clear this case then after you know colin's this case then goes cold because they've got no witnesses, they've got no suspects because they've all cleared all the suspects off. However, Scotland Yard Police put the case under review again. So like completely starting from the beginning, they're gonna look at all the witnesses, all the suspects again. They're gonna look at all the statements, all the files, all, tra all the, you know, evidence. Because this was opened in 2002, so this was like some like, like a decade later. And seeing if they can link it to rapes in the areas, you know, stuff like that, which you'll find out. They definitely do. They were comparing injuries of Rachel to in the past like um, 10 years and looking before Rachel was murdered and seeing if they connected in any way. There was this thing called a contracted forensic science service which was you know recently invented forensic science DNA evidence it was all becoming a thing. This was using like small particle fibers of like of like people's skin and like DNA like this is when DNA is proper becoming big. Loads of cold cases are being solved because of this. In this case, they used particles from uh, Rachel's DNA. Luckily, the team who was, you know, the forensic team who was investigating Rachel's death did correctly seal, preserve the any DNA evidence that would have been there. So I think they got some red paint chips they managed to find. They, that was preserved f since, you know, the crime happened. I think there was a footprint that they preserved. There was, you know, Rachel's DNA, there was blood. They managed to actually preserve that, which was great for, for Rachel's case because the DNA actually didn't match um, Alex or her husband and Andre, which meant, you know, it was obviously some someone else's DNA. It was great, great. However, it was not enough DNA for an actual full identification. But in 2006, the team decided to interview sex killers at the time like rapists stuff like that uh, who were at broadmoor hospital which is like a hospital and it's a prison but for like people who are seriously mentally ill who have like committed murder but they've been unstable and they actually managed to get interview a man called robert napper following the interview of um robert napper they dismissed him as a suspect in his case not quite sure on the reason why, but probably shouldn't have done that. End of the first part. The second part is going to be up in about two or three days. And we're going to be talking about Robert Napper and his whole situation. So stay tuned.